So welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, happy birthday to Jessica again. And yes, you are on fire with that hair. And speaking of on fire, I thought I'd put you on the spot this morning because I'm really enjoying what's happening with your team. And I would love for you to share kind of the culture you've been creating in your team and like what's working and, you know, how you're incorporating the diamond dash into, you know, um, bringing that in with your new brand partners. And can you, I would just love for you to just kind of off the cuff, just sort of talk about your team and what you're doing. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, it's cool that there's actually a fair amount of my team is local to me. Um, and so that has been really cool in terms of, um, like there's, there's a fair amount of us that are like, I want to just meet in person. So we've actually been doing weekly in-person meetings, um, every Thursday as a way to, you know, I mean, like build the team socially, but also get together. And I've been, um, setting the precedent that when we get together, we go around and state like, okay, we've got X amount of time together. What do we want to accomplish? And then, you know, like myself or Jade showed up last week, Tanya has been there. Okay. Like who of the upline can help you with these things. And sometimes it's just kind of talking through the, some mental blocks. Sometimes it's like Ruben was like, can you help me draft this email to some, you know, to this group of people that I want to let them know. And so it's just kind of um, opened things up uh, in a new and different way and in a way that people were asking for. And so it's cool to kind of be able to, um, to serve the group in that way. Um, and everyone's really stoked about the diamond dash. And so, you know, we've kind of reached a point where, um, I mean, I guess at least I have where it's like, okay, I've had these people on my team, different lengths of time. And like, we sort of, launched them in different ways and whatever. And I was still learning a lot. Right. And so when we, and what we do on Thursdays too, is listen to the one o'clock um, superfood social team training together as well. And when that diamond dash was announced a couple of weeks ago, everyone was really excited about it. And, and then the idea of launching or relaunching the group. And so everyone's excited to have like to relaunch their business. And we're going to just launch everyone you know and so that's something I want to talk to people this week is like all right let's like set those dates and uh let's do that and uh you know it's kind of just start from square one almost like re-onboard everyone and start from square one and do a launch and see how it goes from there and um we've got some new energy in the form of Matt who's just sort of like Tanya and I like he loves this like it's kind of like a it's almost like a game. It's like, Ooh, can I get points? Ooh, can I do this? Ooh, can I make this happen? And, and he's like, all right, I'm going to be your all-star. I'm going to just see how many people I could get in front of you. I'm like, great. Like, just do it. Um, and so he's been bringing some really good, uh, just like fresh energy as well. So, um, you know, pretty, pretty stoked about that. And, you know, we're kind of like, there's, um, there's a concept with group formation, shoot, I don't remember the name of the person, but there's like the, the forming, storming, norming, performing, right? And so the interesting thing about this and like how we have people joining our teams at different rates, we're kind of always in the like forming and possibly storming. And so what I'm trying to do now is norming, like let's create some norms, let's create some culture, let's create some expectations, right? Um, and then that leads to performing. And so, you know, we can be in those kind of areas at different times and whatever, but, you know, just creating like, okay, this is the norm. This is what, when you step into our team, this is what's happening. Um, and yeah, stoked about it. <laughs> Rach, you're, you're muted. There. So forming, storming, norming, performing is such a great concept that really helps understand like the key, um, sorry, letting Jillian, um, that really helps kind of clarify the different stages of the business. Did you come up with that or is that something that you've heard? No, sure. that's something that we talk about, um, talked about a lot in the challenge course world. And it's a lot with like, um, 
Outward Bound talks about it too. It's like anytime you have a group coming together for X amount of time, and that can be a group for a day or a group for a week or like high school, you know, going to a new high school and doing four years together. Like there's, there's, it can be any group. I forget. I'll have to look up. It's some, some guy came up with the concept. Um, but yeah, it's very, yeah, it's, uh, it's very applicable to this scenario. So I think that you bring up a key point that they're sort of like when you're meet when you're that they're sort of because we're always having an influx of new people there's sort of always a stage of forming that's kind of always happening so we're always kind of reiterating basic tools basic concepts and then there's the storming which is sort of like that wild energy everyone's just excited and running they don't know what they're doing but they're just like going for it like mm -hmm. I'm just calling people I might be doing it wrong but you know like a lot can happen in that storming period. And then norming is sort of like, you know, the, the, the kind of solidifying of the onboarding, right? The, 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 the um, basic tools of the funnel, um, the four eyes or the three eyes, um, and then performing just like having that consistency where it's like at this point, you know, for me being in this for seven years, like I'm, I'm performing, like I, I thought about it and I realized like I prospect, I usually have about three to five, three, at least three people that I talk to who are actual prospects every single day. So, and they're new people. Like I am constantly in conversation. And when I was trying to figure out, um, this is something I wanted to actually share with you all today. When I was trying to figure out like what, what my 90 minute block was, I kept trying to say, like, I kept trying to put it in my calendar for like, you know, nine to 10 30 every day. Like this is my prospecting hour or 10 to 11 30. And I was like, shoot, I just kept missing it. And then I looked at myself and said, what am I actually doing? And I was like, I prospect from seven to eight 30 in the morning. Cause I lay in bed. And I have a million conversations in bed, relaxed. And I'm like, I am doing 90 minutes a day. It's just happening early in the morning. And when I started thinking about like all the people I'm contacting and I look at who I'm writing down, I'm like, I am constantly filling my funnel and it is just happening at a certain time. So one thing to look at if you're trying, if you're someone who's trying to create a time block, just look at when do you do it? Like, look at your actual routine and like, what is your tendency? What is your tendency for your day in terms of how you live it like in the morning I like to have like usually kind of subconsciously not even consciously prospect all morning because that's when I'm doing my posts or that's when I'm doing my stories and then that's when I'm like on my thing looking at everybody that's kind of how I wake up I can't help it it's just how I do it right I mean I could help it that's just sort of what has become my norm of the last couple months and then I like to have a morning routine which is like from you know whatever eight or nine to um, you know, 11 where I'm like doing my, my, my detox, my cleanse, my metal detox. And then, and then I'm preparing for the zoom. And then we have our zooms, whatever, whether it's this or blissful hominal or whatever is the midday zoom. And then, and then it's connect calls all afternoon. Right. And then, um, and then I have my, eve I usually try to have my evenings free after seven o'clock, but sometimes I do do connect calls later. It's fine. I have that available in case for, you know, emergencies or people who really have people who just can't do it any other time. So that I looked at the natural rhythms of my day and then created my structure around my natural rhythms. So if you're somebody who's struggling to create structure, look at what your natural rhythms are and try to create your structure around what you naturally do so that you can say, yes, I'm accomplishing that because look at what I naturally do at that time, right? So maybe your natural prospecting time is like around five o'clock. Well, then make that your time, <laughs> you know? Um, and then give yourself credit for that. Give yourself a pat on the back. Hey, I just been on my phone for a half hour. Like, hey, I'm doing it. You know, I'm doing the thing. Um, so I really want to bring this concept into the team that you just presented, forming, storming, norming, and performing. Um, so if we were going to- Yeah. I just looked it up. It's Tuckman's, it's Tuckman's theory of group development or something like that. Tuckman's theory of group development. Okay, great. So, and, you know, I like how, how you have, well, you know, there's basically you with your team meeting every week in person is so important because they're being exposed to multiple people, not just one-on-one -on, -one on a call or even a three-way call, because then they, people, what happens when you're meeting regularly, you're meeting weekly is that people are starting to inoculate each other for lack of a better word, you know, like we're all like mushrooms, mycelium, we're inoculating. And I noticed this happening when um, I had everyone over for dinner and Sonia was there and Ruben was there and you were there and um, Kat was there, um, Tanya was there. 
And naturally, so Sonia was just a customer under Ruben, but then as I was talking to her, I was like extracting this, that there's actually this interest that she has in the business that she didn't know she had. And it just kind of naturally came up. And so suddenly she was like interested. And we kind of like, from that you catalyzed her. And then she was like a brand partner and then she enrolled people and it was like, wow. So that's actually happening. So it takes time to start to have a team in your area. But if you have a team in your area, it's really important to meet regularly, to have some consistency and friendships and to build the community because we do all become friends. It's really beautiful, but we do all become friends. And through that, that gravitates more people because people are coming to their friend circle and wow, everyone, Jessica and I went dancing with Kat one night and one of her friends is like, who's that cool person, Kat? And she's like, oh, she's on my team. She's like, who's that cool person, Rachel? She's like, she's on my team. And she's like, maybe I should join your team. Like, that's what she said. <laughs> she actually said that maybe I should join your team. So, you know, you start to create a magnet. And when I started in this area, I started having healthy happy hours in person. And first there were just a, like three of us at my house <laughs> and then it became four and then it became five and then it became six. And then it started being my yoga teacher studio. And then she started inviting all of her students and then her teachers and it got bigger and bigger. Pretty soon we were having healthy happy hours with 40 people. So Jessica is in that expansion and that's what I'm seeing happening. So now that, you know, I know that like there's lockdowns and, you know, COVID rules and things like that, but, you know, and on Jessica's team, some of us are vaccinated, some of us are not, and we're still all gathering. We're wearing masks, we're doing whatever the thing is, and everybody's just being mindful and everyone's still getting along and it's no, not a big deal, right? We don't have to make it a thing that either, you know, divides and, and whatever. So, um, so, you know, we all have respect for each other. Um, so yeah, I just want to, you know, encourage you all to think about creating that camaraderie and solidarity within your area and bringing people together in person and as much as you can because that is definitely going to facilitate growth people are going to learn from each other and that's one of the reasons why this weekend our our team retreat is so important that we're having at tall's house at our gym and um, we have this la retreat which anybody you're still welcome to come if you want to get a last minute ticket you can figure out how to make it happen uh you know this is going to be an opportunity to kind of brainstorm and get new ideas, break through limiting beliefs, break through, you know, whatever little obstacles might still be in the way and also give your team, especially new people. It's so important to bring new people, brand new people to events or to the weekly gatherings or to the weekly healthy happy hours, whatever it is you're doing in your area. Um, so if we were, so Jessica, if we were going to plug this in, forming, storming, norming, performing, I have some ideas about where I see that in terms of like how we do the business from week to week. How would you, how would you, um, what would you, how would you allot each word, each concept to what area of the business, if, you, if that makes sense to you? Um, I guess, what do you mean by what area of the business? So when I think about it, I think like business. when we're forming, you know, it's like, it's like we're prospecting and it's the connect call and there's this onboarding, right? That's kind of forming. Mm -hmm. And then storming sort of like they're off and running. They don't know what they're doing. They may not be doing the, the widening your reach or they may not be doing it well or they may not understand how to concept it right well and i would say i would say storming too is like um you know because i've had moments where like i've been frustrated or like not going as fast as i want to or you know like there there's like the frustration or like can i even do this or you know there's maybe like some self-doubt that comes up or like that storming is everything it's like you know, whether it's like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just doing it or gosh, I, I'm doing the things, but it's not working or, you know, like it can be excited. all of that. Um, and that if you can stick with it long enough, you can come out of that storming phase um, and then norming. And I, I mean, just from my own, like my own personal journey, right? Like it was, there was like a couple months and I hit fast start director and then I hit fast start executive. And then there was a couple of months where I was like, I don't know if I want to do this, man. Like, is this really the thing, man? Like, I don't know, this is dumb. And, <laughs> and like had some like dark stormy times in my, in my head, but I also knew it was so, so clear for me that this was an opportunity that I could make happen. And so even when I had the days Sometimes it was like three days of I was like, Meh, fuck period, meh, or whatever. <laughs> <We've all laughs> had them. I, but I but I knew, but I knew 
that it had nothing to do with like Perium or Perium's process or the systems or any, like it was me, it was me and what I was going through. And it was my mental stuff. And that, um, that if I just allowed space for myself to feel that, that I knew it would be temporary and I'd come back out and be motivated. And sure enough, and sometimes it did, it took a few days and then I'd be like, no, this is too, this is too good of an opportunity. And this is what I've been looking for. And, you know, of all the things I've tried to get off the ground, this is the clearest path for me to have the financial security that I've been looking for. And then, you know, for, and, and like, you know, building a team, which I love and creative outlets, which I love and diving into health and wellness, which I love, you know, all these things that were very fulfilling to me. So I knew if I could just allow the space for my little negative voice to just kind of say what it needed to say and then go, okay, cool. But that's not actually how I feel. Then I'd come out of it. And I did that, you know, a few times, like I went through that cycle a few times, but I stayed, you know, then I, and I even like, stop going to the zooms and was grumpy and whatever and then I was like okay let me just start showing up to the zooms and like just see what happens right staying close to the fire right and then eventually you know there was like with the intention and like showing up like you're letting the universe know no I'm still in this and maybe you're not like all the way in it maybe you're not like you know fully doing the things or whatever but eventually it starts to click again and eventually you get momentum again and you know I would say in the last couple months month and a half like it clicked in such a way that like I don't even have those days anymore where I'm like me I don't know if I want to do this I'm like yeah no this is what I'm doing and I'm so solid in that and so sometimes it just takes time it takes time to allow the space for that to happen, to clear out the negative stuff in your brain and then go for it. So the storming phase can be, you know, all looks different for everyone and, and be like, can come up in different ways. Um, but that norming is starting to happen, right? Where it's like, okay, now I know what to say. Now I know how to onboard. Now I know how to, you know, and here's the expectation I lay out for every single person that I talk to. This is just what we do. Um, and you know, and I feel like that, uh, it, it, like I, we're just kind of entering that norming. We're just getting into that norming. Cause even we've been meeting <laughs> on Thursdays for like a few months now, but there was so much like social, like we're all just like, ah, hi, how are you? Let's talk. Let's be social. Let's like, we all want to be friends with each other so much that we weren't getting enough done. And so about a month ago, maybe I started cracking the whip and was like, all right, we're going to set down some, you know, some norms, some cultural norms about us getting together. And we are, there's still going to be space for the social, but like, here's what we're going to do. And so we're just kind of entering that piece right now. Um, and I, and I have no doubt that once like the performing piece starts to happen, like, I just know where it doesn't, it's not going to take too long and we're going to get there and we're just all going to flow like a well-oiled machine. And like, that is what I'm holding in my vision is like, we are going to get there. And then it's just going to become like clockwork and anybody that steps into it is going to be like, Oh shoot, this is what we do. All right. Let me step right into what y'all are up to. So, um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. You talked about forming, you talked about storming, the kind of like, ah, and then the, and then the norming, like things are coming together, starting to gel. And then now having a well-oiled machine that's now performed, like there's some consistent culture, there's some consistent yeah. action that's happening and it's, and people are seeing each other around. So when you bring your people together, everyone's seeing Matt's running for diamond. He's in action. He's brand new. He's already has his first healthy happy hour lined up. I mean, it's like, people are seeing what's happening and then it's inoculating them with like, oh, oh, this is something I can do. This is what's possible. And it's, it keeps the hope alive, right? I can't yep. tell you how many times Sarah and I both were ready to throw in the towel, every single rank, all the way up into crown, into two-star crown. We've like had moments of like, that's it. I'm done. I'm throwing in the towel. I'm like, ah, you know, like going crazy. And then feeling like if we're not moving and it's funny because you can even get up into like a crown rank and just be like, and if you're not moving up, it's like, hey, everyone's like, why are you complaining? You're a crown, you're making the same amount of money. But if you're not moving, you're like, I'm failing. Like somehow I'm not good enough. And I, I, I guess like no one loves me or I don't love enough or something's wrong. You know, it's, it's like, you can feel that at every stage. I watched Sarah go through it every star. 
one star crown, two star crown, three star crown, four star crown. And she's like beating herself up and like, what am I doing? You know, what am I doing wrong? And it's so funny. So you're with like the successful person, but no matter where you are in the organization, we all have it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's the way life is. Life is never like one perfect stream. We're always going to have obstacles and hits and things that are going to take us down or take us out or take us, you know, aside for a moment. But, you know, I love that you came back to the Zooms and that you, you know, you said, okay, I need to come back to the fire. Those of you who are consistently at the fire are learning the most valuable tools, like, you know, how to deal with objections, how to deal with, um, how to, how to implement a new, a new campaign. So you were on the Zoom where they introduced the diamond dash and you were immediate, like, like we're getting, we got to like inoculate Matt and get him to the diamond. Mm -hmm. And get mm -hmm. get them to you know do the diamond dash and so and then, and now that everybody knows so for now and through January if your person makes diamond in that time period since if they signed up you are gonna get that diamond dash matching bonus like holy cow that's amazing that's new like we didn't have that before so this is like a whole and so and then also making sure that every conversation with every new person. So you're always mentioning diamond. You're letting them know you want to get to diamond. This is where you're going to go. This is where we want to get you. And also, this is something also that I really want to inoculate the team with, which is not having consultant be the basic rank anymore. Okay. And Eric Worre actually came to Perium and told us that diet, that director needs to be our basic rank. Director is the basic rank. So Yes, we'll mention consultant, but we want to tell people they can get to director and really focus on people getting to director as the norm, as the norm getting there in the first, whatever, 10 days, two weeks, but really focusing on director as norming director. So um, if you haven't heard that before, let that sink in and start thinking about how you're going to bring this into the culture, because what we expect, I know I've talked about this before, but what we expect is what we get. And there are studies that show children in a classroom setting, when a teacher is told these kids do well and these kids do poorly, even though they may have all been the opposite, that the kids who are expected to do well get straight A's. The kids who are expected to do poorly get poor grades. And that is simply because the teacher was told. So now, we know we want to apply that and know that when we talk to our new brand partners, our new prospects, and we're bringing them in, we want to expect them to do well. We want to expect the best from them. And, you know, what they do with it is up to them or, you know, it's like we, you know, it, what happens happens. But if we don't expect them to do well, we're not going to give them that running start. They're not going to be, they're not going to go for it thinking that they can. They'll go for whatever you tell them they can do. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna shoot high. All right, yeah. let's hear from the team. <laughs> what do y'all think? Come come off mute and join the party here. I just feel oh. like oh go you go. Oh okay. <laughs> um, I just wanted to share something. Um, so Summer Huntington, who's a global coach, she's my coach. You just muted. You're muted. Ah, sorry. Okay. So how to use this thing. Yeah, she's um really eager to sign up as a brand partner, which is amazing because she's like, she is super global and has a really big network. Um, and she's really good at sales. Like she it's her heart and soul. And um, she's in the fitness community. So Rachel, I was wondering if um I could connect her with you. Stephanie oh. asked me to connect you. Um, because you're in the fitness world and Definitely. the other cool thing about summer is she has this local yoga studio and she wants to start doing bi-weekly happy healthy hours with Perium products that's how much she's into it with me wow. and I feel like this is going to be a game changer for me and I'm so excited especially listening to you guys talk about team building mm -hmm. because this is what I can't wait to do I cannot wait to build a team I feel so like invigorated by the idea of leading a team and I love what Jessica shared about like her process and I'm just like oh my gosh Jessica I really want to connect more with you again because I want to learn from you and um yeah anyway I don't know what I'm getting at I just wanted to share I'm excited because I feel it happening I feel it manifesting 
And I'm just so thankful to be a part of this team and to be on these Zooms with you guys and just feeling, yeah, really invigorated right now. So. Yay. Woohoo. And awesome. you can always share a story, right? You want to share a story of success in that industry of somebody who's had success in whatever endeavor they're in, whether they're a nurse or a doctor or whatever, like there's stories of success for every kind of person. And Julie just got me on a call yesterday with somebody who is a yoga teacher in Northern, I'm like Northern British and Columbia. And, um, and, uh, so I shared with her the story of someone having a very successful yoga studio, right? I was saying like, oh, you teach yoga. So I went into like, how many people do you have? How many people come through your studio? And then I shared with her a story. Oh, I had somebody who was a yoga teacher who was one of the first people to join my team. And she was, was in, she was having these groups transformations and was causing, not only was it causing her yoga studio to have consistent people, but those people would share with other people and then more people were coming to the studio. So it was causing, like, this is something that can, if you have a studio or a gym, this is something that can not only cause retention in your studio, but it can also increase the number of, um, of clients that you have, the number of um, customers that you have. Welcome, Mark Anthony. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, so yeah, we can like really increase increase our, our people, our, our, um, you know, the number of people are coming. So, um, so, you know, and then I shared with her how much my, you know, my friend was making, she made, she made like $5,000 the first two months. And she basically had a group transformation with her entire studio. She did it regularly. She was doing it every month. And then all of her teachers became brand partners because they all experienced it first as customers. And they were like, Whoa. And then they became brand. Actually, they kind of became brand partners when they became customers. But then they were, but the beauty of it is then they're able to share it with their class and she still benefits. So no one feels like they're stepping on the studio's toes by promoting their cleanse to their class. Cause they're like, I have, Ka I have Kashi's blessings. You know, she's actually su supported if I go ahead and promote my group transformation to my class. So it's a really beautiful way for people to feel autonomy and feel like they have their own thing going within a group structure where there actually is a boss, you know, <laughs> where there's like somebody else who owns a studio, you're not stepping on toes. Maeve, it's so And cute. I have a quick question, if I may. Yeah. Um, Rachel, at some point, can you direct me to any previous Zooms where you go over um, happy, healthy hours in person? Because I want to like get a really good understanding of how to best facilitate that in person at the studio. Um, I think, I don't know if I have any, we probably have something, but I don't know where they are, but I'm happy to just, what would be best is if we just all got together and talked about it. And then I trained you guys in person. I think it's better if we do a Zoom and like actually do the training, but you know, the healthy happy hours in persons are very similar to the virtuals. It's five components. I'll just go ahead and tell you guys right here. We share the mission and vision. We share a story. We share three stories of transformations of, of um, health transformations. We share the products and then we share the um, price and then we share a business, business stories. All of those kind of include business stories, but we make sure there's a really solid business story at the end. And then we share um, and when, then we share the gift code opportunity and then we share the website. So that's the, me the method is there's always the mission and vision and three stories. And then there's a product explanation and then there's the pricing. In everybody's stories, you always want to talk about how you've saved money, if it's true for you, if you've saved money and how, how much, and if you've earned money, if you've earned, if you've, if you've actually been a brand partner and you've had some success, you want to share, share that. Maybe it's helped you pay for your products. Maybe you've, you know, helped people transform their lives. Maybe you've, you know, you know, been able to pay car payments, or maybe it's like helping you pay. Maybe it's like, you know, it's half your income, right? So whatever's true, you want to make sure that you're sharing that. So those will overcome obstacles like people's objections. You want to overcome those objections in the presentation. So I hope that's helpful. And then also, this is something important to cover. Let's see if I have it written down here. Um, we want to make sure that we are always there. That there's like basically five um, specific points that we want to make about the business when we're when we're talking about. Um, when we're, when, we're, when we're doing the mission and vision, there's basically five major points. And I thought I maybe had them written down right here, but my thing is so sloppy. I can probably do it from memory. Um, 
So basically, does anybody know what they are? Has anybody else heard the five basic points? Okay. So is that purpose, passion, prosperity, whatever? Rage? Um, is that those ones? Let's see. Okay, here they are. Why Purium? Thank you. I mean, that is a good start. That is a good start, but there's very specifically. Um, one, it's privately owned. This is important because this means we pass on savings, right? Because it's privately owned, we are not having to pay extra for all this stuff. We make the products, right? And so we actually, we actually make the products. We, make, we, we own the farms and we have 17 year history of being privately owned. Um, organic, we were organic before it was organic, before it's such a thing of, or is organic existed, right? Um, number three, we have a clinically proven solution to glyphosate. Number four, we have an activist arm, the Million Mom Movement, which provides an education to the poison and health of our children, about, about the poison and how to create health for our children. And number five, that we're plastic free. So these are five points that we want to duplicate into our team at every healthy happy hour. Privately owned 17 year history. I'm going to do it again. Number one, privately owned 17 year history. Number two, we're organic before organic, before it was organic. Um, number three, clinically proven solution to glyphosate. Four million mom movement activist arm. You could also say awaken project for autistic children. And then number five, where we're plastic, we're going plastic free by the end of the year that we are have, we have um, sustainable solution, hemp and um, bamboo. Okay, so this can be on your connect calls, this can be in your healthy happy hours. And then, um, and then, you know, Lou, I would also encourage you guys, uh, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's having health, a, well, a healthy happy hour is a great start way to start to getting comfortable, but you also want to branch out and have like, um, holistic wealth opportunity meetings, like wealthy happy hours. And this, I would, I would recommend doing both. And when you invite people to a wealthy happy hour, it's really clear whoever shows up is interested in the business. So you're not feeling like, I wonder if this is, you know, if they'll be interested. It's like, they're here because they're interested and they're very likely to sign up as a brand partner and hit the ground running starting as a brand partner. So when we do a holistic wealth opportunity hour, how do we begin? We talk about, again, the mission and vision of the company. And we're gonna talk about the problem. We're gonna do like the four story business, the four line at the four parts of the business story, right? The problem, the solution, and how we feel about the future. We're gonna be sharing kind of on a bigger level. So the problem that we see in the world, right? This is like a world problem. Um, health, the problem, I'm sorry, sorry, I meant to say wealth, like the problem of disparity, right? That right now, especially, like we have a huge story right now. People are not able to work, right? And now that we have mandates, there's people who aren't able to work because they're not vaccinated. So those are actually other people who are really looking for solutions, right? Um, and then we have the fact that people go into debt, like major debt to, to start a business. Um, it's considered normal. It's considered extremely normal to take out a loan of 75, you know, 25,000 to 100,000 or more dollars to start a business and to be in debt for five years before you're going into profit. So this is a solution to that because you don't go into debt. You're basically, you buy products and now you've got a free business right? And if you're going into debt, you know, I borrowed 20, I, I borrowed, you know, whatever, $500 to get, I think I borrowed 250 of the $500 to get started when I started. So big deal is in $250 in debt. I was like out of debt before the end of the month because I made my money back from the business and was able to pay that back, right? So to be able to get out of debt in your first couple months, like that's unheard of, right? So, so we talk about, so when we do a, wealth, a holistic wealth opportunity hour, that is what we focus on is the problem and how this is a solution to that problem. People, so debt and easy overhead, like this being the solution to that. 
Um, and then also the concept of residual income and the concept of being able to retire someday and how these products can also save us money because it's everything's every, the, the conversation in a holistic wealth opportunity is like also about how we can support ourselves um, with this, these products financially, how the products themselves can save us money. And then we share stories. Again, we share stories, a few stories, like people are gonna share a few business stories, you know? And even if you haven't made a lot of money in this business yet, you can talk about what you foresee and why you're, why you're, why you're passionate about this model. In the synergistic model of I help you, you help me, we help each other. No one does this alone. You can have your own business, but you can have support and you can have, you know, all those things. And then this is when we bring in the four pillars, people, purpose, planet, and prosperity. So. Sorry, Rachel, repeat that. People, prosperity. People, purpose, planet, prosperity. So that's like, that's, those are like, that's like huge in the holistic wealth opportunity. We talk about the people the purpose, the planet, and prosperity, because this is a mission-driven company. But the more we focus on products, the more people will feel, the more people, we, we have to kind of have a balance. Like in this team, because I'm a health practitioner, we have kind of, I have kind of duplicated to you all, like helping people with all these kinds of illnesses, right? So it's kind of become like a, how can we help people with transform their health? But quite honestly, to be really successful in this business, we have to let go of that a little bit. And we have to focus on like, everyone needs to detox and nourish. And it's not about you need to feel better, but it's just about, it's a good idea to detox and nourish as preventative medicine, right? This concept of like, we're all exposed to toxins. We all need to detox and nourish. We all wanna form better cravings and habits. If you come from this very generic, basic point of view, people will not come in thinking, It'll only work for me in a business if I have an incredible transformation and feel better. Right? If people feel like I can only do this business if I've been sick and I have an amazing transformation, they'll feel like they don't know how to present this to their friends and family. And they'll only be able to present this to people who are sick. So I think it's really great to watch SEMA and RAW because they have this down. They were not sick to begin with. They were athletes who were like in peak health when they started. And they were just like, we, we're like super healthy. We're into health. Like give us something healthy. This is liquid sunshine. This is like incredible. This is like incredible nutrients. We need to detox and nourish. And so they really glommed onto the concept of detox and nourish, which is what Dave's basic pillar is. This is just detox and nourish. So if we can also have a balanced message, like, yes, we can talk about our own health recovery, but if we can also have a balanced message of like people need to detox and nourish, people will be drawn to that more than feeling and being like, oh, I can do a business that's helping people detox and nourish rather than things saying, well, I need to try it first to feel it before and see if I have a transformation before I can sell it. So let that sink in. Any thoughts? Thank you so much for that download. I took a lot of notes and um, just really appreciative right now for all of that. And so. Awesome. You're welcome. Amy, were you going to say something? You're leaning in. Uh, yeah, I just think that's huge because I, I'm not that I had to fabricate a health transformation because I did. I just didn't, it just didn't ring as true as the belief I have that everyone needs to detox and nourish. And so saying that really like, boom, because, um, yeah, it, it's like I had a transformation. It's pretty impressive, but it never felt jazzy enough or it just didn't it just didn't feel authentic enough. My whole value is that this is something we we should just live by. So, Yay. yeah, Beautiful. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like that. Thanks. Yeah, you might want to go to Raw. I mean, Seema's page and just look at how she does Instagram. It's like she never talks about health issues. I don't think she ever talks about health. I never seen her talk about health issues. She just talks about business and she talks about detoxing and liquid sunshine. So it's Actually, really motivating to think about how to duplicating somebody who isn't having to duplicate illness and recovery. Yeah, I was going to say, I have seen Seema talk and she she's very different than we talk, like Jill and I discussed it, but, and it's, it's, she's like, what? She doesn't even care to know exactly what's in everything. She's just like, you feel great. Like, so don't like, she, she, 
she lets the results sort of speak for themselves really magnetically. Yeah. Yeah. She's very general. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. What else do you guys observe or think? <laughs> Any other thoughts? Well, I just came back, so I have a lot to absorb. I couldn't hear you. What was that? I said I just came back, so I have a lot to absorb. Okay, good. Awesome. Welcome back. <laughs> good to see you. Anyone else? And it could be about anything. It doesn't have to be about this. Any other thoughts or celebrations? Any celebrations? Things that you guys are feeling excited about within yourself and your team or something that's working for you? Hi. Um, Hi. I want to go back to what Jessica was saying. And I want to say that that's where I am just coming out of. Like I... I'm not going to say that's where I am now because I'm not because I'm on the Zoom, but um, I was so looking forward to September. I was so looking forward to it being the new year of everyone, you know, coming back after summer and getting back on it and all these people who were chatting over the summer and yes, we're going to buy and I've got my link and I'll, I'll let you know when I'm going to do it and you can talk me through it and then nothing happened and I honestly was just like, screw it screw you screw you all my brand partners they weren't napping they were they'd completely fallen off and I was just like Ugh. and then being here today I was like I have to be there like I dropped I missed the zoom yesterday I I'm just I am confessing now but I'm saying I'm here now and listening to Jess and um, knowing that she's one of the first people who inspired me when I came on board in February and March and I'm like, she's like me. And, you know, like, and I also have exactly the same ideal. I'm like, this is it. This is the closest I've ever come to having a team, being accountable, having self-development, being able to learn, having opportunities, having an income, like it's right there. And it's up to me. It's totally up to me. So I, I do need to, you know, relaunch my business. I, you know, I remember what you said, Rachel, like the people who get you to diamond aren't the people that are going to get you to the next few ranks. Um, and with that in mind, I forgive and release my brand partners and I can, and they can, you know, be as good as customers. Um, that's fine. So yeah, I just, I almost feel a little bit like I've been in my own dog house and haven't really been wanting to say much, but I'm just sitting here taking all the notes and I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. This is, this is my opportunity for a legacy for my whole life so I'm not leaving so Jess thank you so much you totally woke me up today that is so beautiful Jane I really really love hearing that I appreciate you so much cool. I really see you as a solid a solid team member I mean I really feel you since the beginning you've been like 100% in and um, you know sometimes we do take vacations and we need to and um, you know it affects our business it always does you know it's just the way it is um, when I took, when I, when I had to move, I was so upset because I knew I was like, oh, this is going to put a dent in my business. I'm going to slide back. I just know it. Cause that's just how, whenever I take a break, you know, I take, then, then people don't know who to follow. <laughs> what do I do? You know, what's the campaign? You know, it's like, if I'm not showing up on Zooms, other people aren't showing up on Zooms. You know, my brand partners don't know to show up on Zooms. And so our consistency creates a consistency for our team. They if we're there, then they feel they need to be there. And if we're not there, they don't feel they need to be there, you know? Um, so that's, so yeah, like we always are looking for three legs, but then you want to keep going. That's why we keep prospecting. We want to keep having more brand partners because those three legs might not be the three legs that get us the crown. You know, we're going to have, you know, three new legs. Um, mm -hmm. I have many, 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 many diamonds on my team who are inactive, um, who have like gotten to diamond and then like maybe got married and had children or, you know, things happen and it's like, and they're like, Oh, I'll come back. I'll come back. And they have that intention. And sometimes they do come back. You never know. Um, but you know, then you, you create new, you always want to be creating, you always want to be creating new leaders and you want to look in your team for who are those people who are excited. Like Jilly is not direct to me. She's three below. She's three. She's there's, there. It goes Malia and then Hannah and then, and then Jilly. 
Malia and then Hannah and then Jilly. What? What are you saying? I think it's just Hannah. Hannah. Just Hannah. It goes Malia, Hannah, Jill. That's what I said. But That's still. three. That's three. Two. No, it's Malia's my first. Hannah. Hannah's the second, and then you're my third. You're my third like. You're three to me. Oh. Oh. You're, you're my third on my third leg. <laughs> my third, my Even third, more impressive. my third level. So, you know, but I, but I'm like, she's excited. We're going to move together, you know, and then you treat the, whoever's that new excited person is, you treat them like they're your front line. You're just like, I got yeah. you, you know, and you yeah. just bring them in tight. Like Jilly's doing that right now with Lana, you know, and there's like Lori and then Lana and she's like, Lana's my girl. We're going, we're running, you know, and she got him on a call with me, but that's activating Lana. What happens if you find someone deep down on a third leg, fourth leg or second leg, like if you find somebody there who's really excited and you work with them, they're going to activate their upline. As soon as somebody in the downline gets activated, the upline doesn't want to lose out on those points. Like, oh my God, I got like all these points. If I just get one other person to consultant, I will have diamond, you know? So, um, so it's great to taproot and work with people who are further down in your organization sometimes. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, going back to when you moved, Rachel, I remember that and it was seamless. It seemed, okay. it was stressful for you, but we knew you were moving and we shuffled and like I, I was new. And so it actually um, made me stronger and better wow. at connect calls quicker because I had to, because I had oh, brand please. partners and they had customers and Jilly, you, you just empowered Jilly and she was doing it for our part of the team for team Canada. Oh, wow. So yeah, you yeah, can, yeah. and that's what happens when you are in leadership and you plan for it yeah. and you did it. So yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Well, you know, also, I also kind of set it up planning to leave. So I had Jessica led a Zoom once and then Tanya led, I think, maybe Talit. I don't remember, but like y'all just kind of like, this is also one of the ways you raise up leaders is also just like, you know, give them responsibility and then they step into it and now they're running. So, um, and they did a great job. Y'all did a great job while it's gone. So um, thank you. Any other thoughts, any other inspirations, any other celebrations? Well, I don't have a celebration, but I do want to say this, that um, I, I'm struggling with brand partners. I don't know what the deal is, um, but whatever, whatever, I'm staying the course. Um, I, I love the Zooms. The Zooms keep me accountable. They hold me close to the fire. They give me all the information. They remind me of stuff all the time. And I go, oh, right. Yes, I have access to that. Okay, I can do that. Um, and I'm just going to keep pushing. You know, I, I got a new what I thought was an excited brand partner a couple of weeks ago. And you know, buyer's remorse. She's like, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm freaking out. So it's just another one bites the dust, you know, but it's whatever. Just keep, keep trucking, keep trucking along because I've already taken a two year sabbatical from doing the business and it's really no fun. <laughs> so I'm just going to stay in this and uh, stay close to the fire until, um, until whenever, you know, just keep going. And the cool thing is while you took two years off, you were still getting some, some checks from here I am. <laughs> that's the beauty and so that's why we always kind of want to shoot high because what happens is like we are going to slip back if we're inactive for a while we do slip back slip back slip back but you know if you get to a certain point you don't you're only going to slip back so far so that's why people can retire because you're like i've built this huge organization and now i can retire and this is going to continue to pay me because i've built it big enough now they're strong enough leaders and they're all leading their own teams and so now there's a certain amount of security that you have right um, and I'd be happy to talk to that person if you want to, if there's any way to possibly do a check-in around her health or like, you know, whatever, I'd be happy to talk to that person if you want to get her on a connect call with me. So I'm actually trying to get her hair this weekend. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Now you're talking. That's going to make her feel the, that's going to make her feel the invigoration. She's such an introvert. She really is such a true, true introvert that, Beautiful. and I don't even really know her. I literally just met her because she asked about gym membership. Oh, and okay. I turned her into a Perium customer slash brand partner. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So I want to go back to also doing interviews. And I want, I want to tell you that Gleneth got someone on the call with me who was um, 
a customer and she saw my interview, like she didn't, I didn't even know we were, I've never even met her before. Like, I don't, she was like a customer a long time ago. And she saw me interviewing Carrie and um, from Julie's team and Sonia. And she saw my, my thing about um, that somebody else shared to their timeline. It wasn't even someone in Perium, someone shared something and she saw it. And, and she was, she watched it several times. She memorized the whole thing. She, she told me everything I said about metal detoxing, about the doctors that I quoted. She remembered all these different things. And she, he brought me on a connect call with her to me this morning. And now she's becoming a brand partner. And, you know, so she's, you know, somebody struggling who's, you know, now a brand partner. And it was because she saw my interviews and they really stood out and she remembered them and told them, recited them back to me. So I really want to make sure we're still, let's like still, let's do widen your reach this week, you guys. Okay. So we're, um, it's Tuesday. We have till Friday. I'd like for everybody to do three lives, do, you know, interviews with each other. So let's set those up. I'm going to let us go into breakout rooms real quick. And um, in the breakout rooms, uh, I want you to share, um, you know, just, you know, set up interviews with three people. But I'd also like you to um, share an obstacle and then give yourself the solution. I want you to share something that you're feeling like, you know, you are giving, I want you to give yourself a hand with something. I want you to ask a question like, here's what I'm looking for. And then what is your answer to your question? Like, what will help you with that? And then everyone can also chime in if you want them to. But I want you to um, just use critical thinking skills in this, in this just for fun, okay? So we'll just do this exercise. And let me go ahead and put us into breakout rooms for the last 10 to 15 minutes. We'll come, we'll come back and, and chat again. So let's see. Breakout rooms. There's 11 of us, so one second. Go. And here we go. I think you have to accept your breakout room. Naomi, are you there? Are you able to go into your breakout room? Did you get my message in the chat, Rachel? Oh, I missed it. Oh. Okay, hold on. Let me move you. Thank you. Um, two, two. <laughs> You'll have to tell me more about that later. <laughs> Hey, Mark. You're, you're muted. Oh, where are you? Are you in Canada or New Zealand yeah. or Austria? Yeah, I'm in Canada. I'm in Squamish, same as Jilly. Oh, okay. Because of your accent, I thought maybe you were from New Zealand or- uh... I am. You're right. I am from New Zealand. Do you know what I did? I just, we were just, um, we had 60 seconds left in the breakout room. And it said, you have 60 seconds. And I, I just have this human thing where I'm like, push the button. And that's it actually like said, leaving the room. And I'm like, oh. that's so, exactly but that's cool because I, I get to chat to you. Yeah, wonderful. I uh, accidentally also touched the button when I saw it as well. Oh. <laughs> I know, Rachel, we're in the middle of talking and you just disappeared. Yeah. yeah. I well, the button, button comes up and it doesn't say, would you like to leave the breakout room? There's one one thing, and if you push it, you leave. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my the human in me just pushed it, and I'm like, anyway. Hi, Zaya. Sorry, Sorry Jill. Room. Sorry, Jill. Back. So, what did you guys get out of this? And um, you, Mark, you're well, since you didn't get to finish answering your own question, <laughs> you're welcome to share if you want to start first. Oh man. And I want to hear you know what people got from that. About the block. Mm 
my block is like I said, I was I was sharing is just that I came out of some personal stuff, you know, in my life, and then the pandemic came. I was sick. I got COVID. Then I got I was recovering, and then isolation and anxieties and all of that kind of stuff like swirling. And then I found this protocol in March and it actually literally saved my life. And I jumped, I hopped on the business and I came on like really quick and I was doing everything as quickly as possible. And then I kind of got sick again and then I fell off. So I'm back again, <laughs> but I'm still, you know, persevering, persevering, persevering. And I have to keep focus. I have to keep the vision focus. You know, because I want this to be successful. I want this to be part of my business um, uh, with my, you know, coaching business. I think it's very, very important for nutrition. So I just have to keep uh, focused. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm hearing that perseverance and focus is the answer to your question. To your own, you answered your own question with perseverance and focus. Thank you. Any other um, breakthroughs or takeaways? Love to hear everyone just pop on real quick. I think for me, I have um, this kind of fear right now. I don't know why, but I have a little bit of a fear of leading and hearing Jessica talk about just getting together and doing like just doing the thing, do it with the group. And that really, really, really motivated me. So thanks, Jess, if you're still on. I don't think you are. Thank you. Next. I think um, the three of us, um, Tal, Jilly and I, we, we're a case of perseverance too, because we were talking about wanting to um, get together as a team and it's really difficult um, for us to do it. So we're like, we're just gonna do it. We're gonna, um, our, our problem was that we weren't getting together as a team and our um, way of our solution is we're just gonna plan it. We're gonna pick a day, we're gonna meet and we're going to continue to meet. It's going to start with a minimum of two people and it's going to grow. Well, three, because Amy's here and we know Amy will come. So it, we're just going to do it. Hey, Talon, congratulations for your thing that's coming up. Your passion and purpose. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Passion and products. Yes. Product, Tomorrow product. night. Please jump on, support. I'm like a little freaked out and nervous, but everyone invite and excited and uh kind of yeah, it's gonna be great. <laughs> I wish I had known. I, I just found out that you're having something this weekend. I wish I had known because I would have hop on a plane. I was looking up the plane prices. Next time. $600 and yeah. Um, put it out there like sooner than later. All right, let's keep going around the circle. Let's get everyone in. I know it's latest 121. Anyone else want to share? Like, and everyone share sure to invite to Paul Tall's thing tomorrow night. It's going to be awesome. Her and Gretchen are both badasses and they're going to have some great guests. So definitely invite your um, folks to come. I'll share Rach. Um, so for, for, for me, I, my personal share was that there's usually the answers in the question. So I was like, what can I do? What can I do in this moment to, you know, put an end to all the barriers and just, you know, not live in conclusion was the answer to that for me. So if you're not living in conclusion, you're pretty much taking care of everything. <laughs> you're pretty much leaving yourself open to present moment. What I really liked about Lou's share is that she was, vulnerable and shared how she didn't see herself. And then we were able to echo, reflect back to her how we saw her, which I saw her, she was wanting to do healthy, happy hours, but wasn't right feeling super confident with it. And it's like, oh my gosh, as I experienced her a extremely competent and really engaging facilitator. So I think she appreciated hearing that and it was the truth. And then Zaya just um, really, um, well, she shared well about the struggles with the, uh, you know, brand partners, but to me, Zaya represents the ultimate perseverance. Like she is perseverance and she does not sway the course at all. And uh, I think it was just really super inspiring. And we just felt like as much as the community is a big 
a big hug. Like sometimes the breakout rooms are like little tight hugs and we liked it a lot. That's so awesome, thank you. Anyone else? Non-related, but I just wanted to remind everybody about what was just announced, how the, the diamond trip has been extended to January. And that is huge, gives us more time, right? Or, you know, not that we need more time, but it just allows for a lot more opportunity. So, Can somebody explain the diamond dash until January? Do any of us qualify for that bonus? Only if, if you, you're, you qualify for a matching bonus if someone you enroll gets to diamond. Jilly, did you oh, want to- Oh, I see. Okay. No, at, four any, months. anybody who hasn't, so you, you don't have to be in your fast start. Tell me if I'm wrong, Rach, but tell me, but you don't have to be your fast start anymore. If, if you're not, then you get $500 to reach it. And then your enroller gets 250. So everybody's still getting a bonus, even if you're out of your fast start window. So it's totally worth for you to get in that diamond run. And also um, there's matching bonuses for the upline. So previously in the fast start window, the diamond um, rank bonus isn't matched, but it is in this diamond run. Yeah. Yay, yeah. more incentive. <laughs> yeah, so you can have a person who's not in their fast start. They might be a year into it and they're going to go for diamond. They'll get diamond. They won't, they'll receive 500 because they're not in their fast start. Um, and then you'll receive 250. That's amazing. So that you're so yeah, motivating. <laughs> yeah, do it. There's a blog post. You can always do a search, a search for Perium blog diamond dash, and it'll come up in the Google search. All right. Love you all. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate y'all staying on late and um, it was really fun to hear your voices. So thank you. And I'm glad y'all had some breakthroughs. Are we prospecting now? Yes, let's, let's prospect. Thank you for the reminder. I always forget. I have so much follow-up to do. Oh my gosh. Yes, let's do that. Thank you. Prospecting hour starts now. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>